Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, teachers of the world. Well, my name is uh, Patricia Rona. Um, I live in Argentina. I'm a teacher and a trainer, and I specialize in phonetics, phonology, and communication skills. Um, I'm an international speaking speaker, and uh, I travel around the world hmm, uh, sharing uh, my teaching practices and learning together with all the participants who join me. Well, it's time to start. Um, well, the topic is pronunciation and communication, no doubt. Hmm? Lina uh, mentioned uh, the topic of this presentation. Well, the role of uh, um, pronunciation teaching uh, has greatly changed over the past few decades. And the main reason has been um, the development of English as an international language. Um, unfortunately, pronunciation um, is not an integral part of language teaching. It is still underemphasized in many um, language programs and also in many teacher training curricula. Um, we know that pronunciation is very challenging and uh, without specific training, it is difficult to find uh, the, um, uh, the, 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 the skills students need to become effective users of English. Um, one of the main barriers is the way pronunciation is taught. We are still having a traditional model um, in which sounds and combination of sounds are taught individually. And the main concern is their accurate production. In this way, important aspects of connected speech are ignored. Um, the problem is that today we need to recognize that um, pronunciation is not just the mastery of individual sounds. It is also concerned with the combination of sounds in connected speech to create meaning. So that's why in this presentation, um, pronunciation and communication work together. Let's see how. Well, <clears throat> when we communicate orally, the language becomes the breathing, hmm? living entity that is defined by the way it sounds. For this reason, we should highlight the importance of, uh, the importance of pronunciation in language teaching. Why? Because students need to be able to pronounce the language in order to communicate. You see, you see that. Uh, it is uh, very clear the connection that exists between pronunciation and communication. Um, nobody can deny that pronunciation is an inseparable part of communication. Uh, it is impossible to speak a language without first knowing about it. And it is impossible to understand people whose speech is not intelligible. In this presentation, um, I will share with you an integrative teaching approach um, in which pronunciation becomes a key component. Um, when this type of approach is implemented in the classroom, the students feel more confident uh, and they can use the language uh, effectively in contextualized settings. Okay. I need to go to the next, uh, or oh, I cannot, uh, okay. Before starting, um, it is important to connect the dots. So here I have brought three questions. Hmm? Um, you can answer them in your chat box. Number one, what is the function of language? Just one word will be enough. Hmm? And I will check your answers. Give us one I'm second. Here. Sorry, there was a technical glitch here. We had to close the breakout rooms. We're opening again. Oh. You kindly rejoin. Sorry about this. Oh. Okay, never mind. Are you listening to me? 
Yeah, so, sorry for the technical issue. No, no problem. I, I will have to share my, my presentation again. Yes, please do. All right. Okay, no problem. Wait a minute. Oh, no, I can't. Wait a minute, please. It was so wonderful before this. <laughs> Here it is. Don't worry. Here it is. Now I'm sharing. That's great. No problem. <clears throat> Full screen. Okay. Here we are. Thank you very much, Lena. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so I was saying, I don't know if you listened to me, that before exploring this approach, it is important to uh, start connecting the dots. Uh, three questions, answer them in your chat box. The first one, what is the function of language? One word will be enough, tell me. <clears throat> Sorry. Let me see. All right, communication. Communication, very good. We should remember that um, um, in our daily lives, mm, we are communicating all the time. Mm? Uh, communication is very active. And we shouldn't forget that um, uh, language is also expressive. Why? Because when we use it, we show our feelings and we express our ideas and thoughts. At the same time, it is performative because when we say something at the same time we do something we promise we invite we complain etc now question number two what is the, the main aim of teaching pronunciation for you let me know one word will be enough good to ensure intelligibility make you make you understood all right understand what is being said is essential great okay so <clears throat> it is important to learn pronunciation it cannot be ignored in the traditional model it is uh, segregated to a secondary place it is not part of the process of learning mm -hmm. and remember that when we are teaching pronunciation the students should learn production and reception of sounds why because these skills are necessary for communication. Good. And finally, how much does accent matter in learning a foreign or a second language? Tell me. <clears throat> Is it important? Yes or no for you? Good. Accents are totally fine as long as it's intelligent. They are intelligible. Good. All right. So, accent is part of our identity. It's our linguistic passport. Mm? Um, this means that uh, it reveals mm, our cultural and geographical background. Everybody speaks with an accent. This cannot be avoided. And something very important is that it cannot be eradicated. For example, if you have a heavy accent, what you can do is to improve your pronunciation because accent will be present hmm? always. It cannot be avoided. And, should, and you should be proud of your accent. For example, in my case, I speak with a Spanish accent, but the Spanish accent that is used in Argentina, you see? So there is a great variety of accents. And today, English as an international language eh, has um, given rise to a variety of accents students cannot ignore. Okay, let's move on. Now, why do we need a new approach? First of all, pronunciation is a vital component in language teaching. Remember, why? Because it improves uh, when students learn pronunciation, they improve their communication. That's why they form a binomial. They are inseparable, all right? 
For this, as I said before, they need to develop productive and receptive skills because when they communicate, they have to speak and listen. And when they are involved in communication activities, they are developing, practicing, improving, listening and speaking skills. Uh, English as an international language has changed the goals of English language teaching, no doubt. Huh? Why? Because uh, today we should not prepare our students to become or to speak like native speakers. Hmm? We do not need perfect writers hmm? or perfect speakers. What we need is effective communicators. That's completely different. Hmm? Um, Jennifer Jenkins, um, a very well-known uh, linguist and the author of The Phonology of English as an International Language, uh, argues that uh, the development of English as an international language has affected uh, the teaching of pronunciation. Hmm? And she has developed um, a, a lingua franca core, which includes uh, features that should be taken into account when uh, English is taught today. Um, English is a global linguistic experience for the students today. The, the students are not studying the English that is spoken by native speakers. They are, they are, uh, they are uh, uh, studying or learning the language that is used around the world. So the change is very important and we cannot ignore these facts. Mm? That's why uh, today English should be taught taking into consideration pronunciation and communication together. When students learn uh, the target language in this way, they improve mm, um, their, their communication greatly. Well, um, in order to be able to speak the language, what do they need? Exposure. Exposure is crucial. In the traditional model, uh, exposure is not important. Huh? Why? Because students learn the language mechanically. Mm? Um, when students are not exposed to the language, they do not become confident enough to use the language in contextualized settings. When the students are exposed to the language, they are able to understand how it works. That's why it is so important, especially today. So the idea is that uh, students um, should communicate with people whose mother tongue is not English. <clears throat> we should remember that English uh, uh, is, no is, is not only spoken by, by English speakers. Uh, it is the tool that is used around the world. Mm? Everybody communicates uh, meanings around the world using English. It is the language for communication. Um, Today, students need intelligibility and communication effectiveness. Mm? This means that accuracy is not important today. They should be allowed to commit mistakes. Mistakes are part of the process. So um, think about this. We cannot expect our students to be accurate in a language they are trying to learn. We um, are not accurate when we are using our mother tongue. So imagine when they uh, are interrupted because they have committed uh, a grammar or a vocabulary mistake, mm, um, it is difficult for them uh, to participate actively because they know that they will be uh, interrupted uh, immediately if they commit a mistake. So the flow of thought they are having is interrupted and then commit. Uh, any type of mistakes, gradually they will be able to understand how the language works. Remember that learning is repetition and practice. Um, well, in this new approach, pronunciation should be used in communicative context. This means that the students live the language. The language becomes alive eh, when they use, uh, they use it naturally in uh, meaningful context. In the traditional model, uh, the activities are mechanical and they are not normally used. Mm? Uh, these activities that are mechanical 
and the information, uh, the grammatical information or, or, or the lexical information they learn are not applied in a contextualized setting. Mm? This is the big difference with uh, both methodologies. Um, it is important to develop communicative and interactional competence in this new approach. Communicative um, competence is an individual skill, mm? and it is the tacit knowledge of the language and the ability to use it in contextualized settings. Mm? And interactional competence is a collective mm, skill. Why? Because it refers to the co-construction of meanings when the students are engaged in a conversation. Students need to know that when we are uh, using the language, we are negotiating meanings. What for? To keep the conversation going. Sometimes students are afraid of using the language because uh, they do not want to commit mistakes. And at the same time, they think that they are not confident enough because they may be responsible for breakdowns. Mm? When uh, language is, when pronunciation and communication work together, uh, gradually the student uh, understands how this works. <clears throat> well, what are the characteristics of this new approach? It is holistic because it articulates thinking, doing, and feeling. Remember that emotions are always present. I need to um, encourage positive emotions when learning, especially a foreign language. Mm? Because pronunciation is not easy for our students. Mm? So we need to uh, encourage them to participate in the classroom in order to improve um, their pronunciation. Uh, this uh, approach is also synthesizing because um, this, this is the big difference with the traditional model. In the traditional model, pronunciation is presented, or sounds in general, are presented in an atomistic anal uh, analytical way. And in this case, all the elements of pronunciation um, are present. That is to say, sounds um, and the meaning that is present beyond sounds. That is to say, the paralinguistic information. You might have noticed that, not, that I'm talking, I'm providing meaning through the sequence of sounds I'm producing, but I'm using body language and uh, facial expressions are present. So all this accompanies the meaning of my words. Mm? And this makes uh, the, um, the speech more interesting because imagine speaking in a monotone. You would get bored mm, in five minutes. So this is conversation. Conversation is an art. And we need to teach our students uh, to um, improve mm, their speaking and listening skills uh, to be able to engage in, com in conversations easily. Um, and it is integrative because pronunciation is not a segregated activity, an independent activity. It is part of other language learning activities. For this drama, I love drama, I use it uh, permanently because I think that it is the tool <clears throat> to use in this particular approach. Why? Because drama is the only method which includes the development of uh, speaking and listening skills. This means that students are using the language permanently in different interactions. And in this way, they sharpen their ears and they improve some production. Isn't it great? Okay, now it is interesting to draw a comparison between the traditional approach and this new integrative one. <clears throat> uh, today, pronunciation doesn't work because for more than 50 years, uh, it has been resented cognitively. And we know that uh, pronunciation is physical, is muscular. It is a skill that can be learned like any other activity, for example, dancing, uh, riding a bike, etc. As it is presented cognitively, um, the focus is on repetition of isolated sounds and words. In this way, sounds are disconnected from reality. Sounds are never applied in connected speech. Hmm? Um, what is important is segmental accuracy. But remember that we do not speak in individual words. Words are connected hmm, in speech. The focus is on speaking. Listening is not present at all. It, it is an underestimated skill. Today, it cannot be ignored. In fact, they occur together. Hmm? 
Um, so the student becomes a passive receiver of information with very few opportunities to practice the language in contextualized settings. When we um, introduce this approach, well, pronunciation is a physical activity. The students can discover uh, the ph phonemic distinctions and phonetic variations. These phonetic variations appear in connected speech. Um, they learn that there are natural components in speech because exposure is present. Eh? For example, stress, highlighting, linking, para language. Para language is what I'm doing now. I'm accompanying, accompanying the words with body language and uh, my facial expressions. Um, the focus is on intelligibility and fluency. The focus is on speaking and listening. They work together. Why? Because when we are speaking, we are, when we are in a conversation, we are speaking and listening all the time. So listening cannot be excluded. And pay attention to this. This is food for thought. In the present um, approach, in the, the methodology that we are using now, uh, listening is evaluated but not taught. It's a paradox. Hmm? Well, um, when we uh, teach pronunciation in this way, students become active participants. Mm? Why? Because they are involved in different types of uh, interactive activities and they develop communication and conversation skills. Okay, so what are the main components of pronunciation teaching? Well, now pronunciation and communication form a binomial. They are inseparable, right? Why? Because pronunciation helps the students to develop productive and receptive skills, which are necessary in communication, because when the students communicate, they speak and listen. Hmm? In this way, hmm, they are inseparable. Communication and pronunciation cannot be separated. Why? Because both of them are working with speaking and listening. And remember that speaking and listening operate together. Hmm? We are speaking and listening all the time and we change roles in speaking. Now, for this, we need to develop productive um, and receptive competence. Productive competence is the ability to produce speech that is intelligible. But it is important for the learner to know what makes pronunciation difficult because we have already said that it is for them. First of all, it is unphonetic. There is lack of harmony between pronunciation uh, and spelling. There are complex articulations. So students uh, have to learn um, uh, sounds which do not exist in their mother tongue. Well, it will take time to learn them, but eventually they will be able to produce them. Um, well, they need to know that there are different processes in connected speech. This is learned through exposure, linking words are together. There is a chain of words when we are speaking. Hmm? So there is linking, there are weak and strong forms. Hmm? There is uh, assimilation. When I say one pound, for example, or coalescence, instead of saying, did you come yesterday? Did you, did you? Hmm? If you um, um, encourage students to, to, be, to be exposed to the language, they will realize that there are differences in pronunciation. When, the, when sounds are used in connected speech. An illusion is um, used to economize effort. When sounds mm, appear together, uh, a consonant sound especially, there is a possibility of illusion. Well, students need to know that English is a stress tank language. And one of the first pieces of information students need to know when they start learning English is the difference between content and structure words. This provides the rhythm of the language. English is very rhythmical. And when they discover this, they concentrate on words that are important. Content words and lexical words are the ones that are important in a message. And structure words are the ones that link the main ideas. That's why they are not important. At the moment, with this approach they are still using, they try to listen to all the words hmm, that are present in a message. This is a waste of time. If they concentrate on what is important, understanding, uh, takes place more easily. Um, well, intonation. Uh, intonation um, is not normally taught. Why? Because 
uh, when students uh, teach to become teachers, uh, sorry, uh, study to become teachers, um, they receive mainly theoretical information and little practice. But if we concentrate on what is important, <clears throat> It is easy to teach highlighting, to teach intonation, because what is important is that when we say something, we highlight eh, a particular word mm, in a sentence. <clears throat> and finally, students need to know that when we are using the language, mm, there is a sequence of words. And these sequences of words mm, are divided into chunks. That is to say, we segment the speech into units to be more meaningful, right? There is not a long sequence of sounds which are not separated. Otherwise, it, would, it, it will be impossible to understand what is said. And besides, the brain cannot get meaning by uh, analyzing individual words. Mm? It can process pieces of speech. And here you have an example. <laughs> um, in this sentence, there are 11 words. But only four are important. Students tend to say, before the bell rang, there were some students in my class. Well, if we teach the students that there are words that are important, well, concentrate on them and forget the rest, because the rest are connecting. Eh? Before the bell rang, there were some students in my class. So understanding takes place more easily. <clears throat> in the case of receptive competence, what is it? It is the ability to understand what is said. Hmm? Well, listening is a, foundation, uh, a foundational skill. Why? Because it is the heart of learning a language. It is a vital skill. It is the skill of understanding the spoken form. In fact, it is the first language uh, we learn. Babies uh, do not start speaking uh, their mother tongue. What do they do? They start listening to it first, right? They listen to their parents, but they concentrate not only on the words their parents use. They also pay attention to the tone of voice and body language. I'll give you an example. I may say to my baby, come on, finish your food. I have to go back to work. And my darling, finish your food. I have to go back to work. So they are able to distinguish the emotional load of words. So you see how important listening is. Well, it is an active process because normally, and we say that it's, it is something passive. No, because when we are listening, there are three processes that are present. First of all, we try to understand um, the sequences of sounds and the meaning. Then at the same time, we are interpreting the tone of voice. And then finally, we recognize, hmm, we recognize the body language, but the three of them are performed simultaneously. Um, <clears throat> so in this way, um, students are able to uh, develop a listener-friendly pronunciation. This means that um, they, when they speak clearly, they understand clearly. So pronunciation is friendly because understanding and being understood take place. And this is what we should <clears throat> uh, help the students to develop hmm, in order to um, to become effective users of English. So in this case, in this new approach, students um, uh, have three main aspects of the language that are important. Intelligibility, the ability to understand what is said. Comprehensibility, the ability <clears throat> to understand the meaning hmm, of what is said and interpretability, the purpose. And this interpretability depends on what is not said, that is to say, the body language and the um, tone of voice. So in this way, the students become good listeners. And when they are good listeners, they become effective communicators. Why? Because they listen not only with their ears. Hmm? They listen to words not only with their ears. They use their eyes and they use their hearts. Remember that feelings are present in the words we produce. Uh, so okay. to interrupt, but you have five minutes. Five Isn't minutes? Right? Yeah. Oh, and the interruption is counted with, within the time I'm, I'm using? Yeah, yeah, I counted it. Oh, my <laughs> God. So we did reduce. So we did reduce. What? So uh, uh, I'll try to, 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 to finish in five. 
I will skip some. Uh, I will skip some slides then. Um, well, so what is important here is to consider the meaning beyond uh, words, the paralinguistic information. Why? Because normally five per fifty-five percent of what we say is expressed through body language. So you see how important this is. Silence is meaningful. So <clears throat> uh, rhythm is important because uh, the students concentrate on important words. And intonation is important because the, the student concentrates on uh, meaningful words. For example, I may say, don't phone you, don't phone you, don't phone you. I have the same, I produce the same utterance, but the meaning is changed because of the different intonation. So you see how important this is. When students learn this, comprehension is greatly enhanced. What? Well, so let's go to, um, to practice in action. I have brought three activities. Eh? Stressing and distressing becomes very uh, um, uh, become very important. Why? Because the students discover that there are uh, important and unimportant words. The idea is to help them discover important words. Concentrate on important words. You prepare handouts and um, they have to underline the um, content words. Three listenings, eh? and then they check their choices, and then you give finally you give the uh, final version. And this text contains 68 words, and only 20, 20 are content words. You see how comprehension takes place in an amazing way. So it is greatly um, uh, the, 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 when we concentrate on this, uh, the students are able to understand and be understood easily eh, without problems but um, I have said that pronunciation should be related to the other aspects of uh, language learning in this case grammar the conditional chain uh, game in this case you start saying um, produce uh, the first conditional for example and then the students in a circle will produce or will start with the second clause for example if I go out tonight I'll go to the cinema so student number one, if I go to the cinema, I eat a lot of popcorn. This is to improve chunking mm, and comprehension. And finally, one word dialogue here is to practice what is not said, non-verbal language. Mm. You prepare handouts again, and the students have to use um, non-verbal language with these uh, dialogues, which contain only one word. For example, they work in teams. Found. Oh, again, unbelievable. And each student will think of a particular situation because not all, not all of them will do it in the same. I've just done it. So this is great because after this, as a follow up activity, you tell the students to create a story eh, and um, to prepare a scene and then act it out in front of the students. OK, what is the final remark? When you discover this uh, teaching approach, uh, you, um, you understand that the key to effective communication is pronunciation. Connected speech is a fundamental aspect of natural conversation. So my advice is give it a try. I'm sure that you will end up loving it. Well, thank you very much. And now I hope that you will have some questions and, and I am really, really um, willing to listen to them. Can I stop sharing? Yes, you can. All right. Thank you very much. It is a very insightful uh, presentation. Uh, I'm okay. Sure... Uh, yes. I, I received a, a question from Ms. Medja saying, I was wondering if we can get that presentation. Okay, yes, yeah, no problem. Yes, yeah, the idea is, uh, probably um, I could repeat it with more time because there is a lot of information in in, in thirty minutes. is 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 just a, an idea of what it is about. Mm? So uh, if you want a full uh, presentation, no problem. So that the teachers can have more questions and uh, more um, uh, ideas about it. Okay, I will, let me see if there is a question. Uh, it says, uh, wonderful talk. I completely agree with your message from Fa Francisca. Francisca. Uh, okay, thank you. 
Okay, well, thank you very much. Okay, <laughs> right. So we could expand it and uh, we could have a, uh, a round table discussion about this because it is the topic today. We shouldn't forget that we need to change the way we are teaching English because students are not confident enough to use the language in the way it is taught. So this is important. Give them the tools they need in order to become international speakers. They need international intelligibility. This is the idea today. Any other question or I something to say? I think that's it. No, yeah. Okay. So the idea is to, this is food for thought. Huh? Probably it's not, change is not easy. I think that you need to, to step outside the comfort zone and to start thinking in a different way. What is important? Our mission is to give the students what they really need, the tools to be able to communicate, not to know a lot of grammar, a lot of vocabulary, is to know how to use the language effectively in contextualized settings. This is the idea. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs>